What's specific about transformation in global companies? I mean, digital transformation is a huge feat, a huge challenge for any company, if you are Swedish or if you're global or regional. But there are some things that change when going either regional or global. One thing is, of course, scale. If you have 124,000 employees, as Microsoft has, uh, and you're global, that has some, some new challenges that come with it. It might be culture differences, it might be other differences, it might be that you have an IT, IT conditions in different countries that differ from country to country. It might be other things as well. It might be leadership differences from country to country. So there are quite a few different things uh, that changes. So that's why we want to dig deeper into this, because we know that a lot of companies struggle. We know that a lot of companies have a hard time dealing with this. It's hard already being in Sweden. How do we do it on a global scale? And we have the great panel here to talk about that. So, that brings me to the panel, and I'm going to start out with the Executive Vice President for Global Sales and Marketing, part of the SAS Group Management, a brave leader that is in the year 2016 received the Award Manager of the Year in the Swedish Grand Travel Award. She's leading a global organization in constant change, and she has more than 25 years of experience within this highly competitive industry. Welcome up, Anneli Nesean. Have a seat, Anneli. I will Thank talk you. to you in a second. Thank you. Next up is the CEO of one of Sweden's industrial jewels, Skania, a digital business leader with passion from strategy and innovation to transformation in the wide digital landscape. After a number of years on the digital transformation supplier side, he is now balancing the here and now with longer term changes in transport and logistics ecosystem. Please give Mikael Kato a big hand. Welcome, Mika. Thank you. Have you heard about this song before? It's called Trucker Man. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, thirdly, we have the Director of Business Development, Digital uh, Human Resources at Microsoft, a long career within human resources, where over the last four years at Microsoft. In the current role, she is driving digital change from a people perspective and building an inno innovative and digital employee experience that attract future talents. A big round of applause to Rika Jonsson. About that song? Yeah, it's perfect. It was perfect. You know why I, I picked that song? No, I don't. <laughs> when you enter Spotify, and I was like, hmm, could I search for Microsoft songs? No, I couldn't. It didn't. I, I, I found no song. But then I started uh, searching for songs with cloud, and this song is actually ah, a Swedish course. song in flames, a Swedish heavy metal band, and it's called Cloud Connected. Great, that's perfect. It's really not right. my kind of music, yeah. but it's okay. <laughs> And lastly, but not least, uh, the Senior Partner and Managing Director for Boston Consulting Group. He's leading the technology, media and telecommunications practice for BCG in Sweden. He's the core member of the global TMT practice leadership team. He is also a core expert in digital strategy and transformation. Please welcome to the stage, Fredrik Lind. <laughs> Fredrik, do you know this song? Have a guess. What group is it? That was many years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's Boston. Of course. Boston. Thank you. Smoking with Boston. Alright, welcome guys. Thank you. Okay. How are you? Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to start from the top. We already spoke a little bit about the transformation and the basics of transformation, having this metaphor, uh, the surfing metaphor. And we'd like you to briefly 
uh, talk a little bit about how you and your different companies view digital transformation and what this word or this concept digital transformation means to you. So I'm thinking, could you, Mika, please start? What is digital transformation for Scania? Well, first of all, uh, we don't really use the word, the word the digital transformation or the words that much. We talk about accelerating digitalization uh, and doing that further. And for us, uh, basically, it, it follows like the change movement of any area. It needs to start with inspiration and, and lust and enthusiasm before you can challenge the organization and then drive specific areas. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the areas, basically our digital model is based on embracing new business opportunities uh, and also improving the core uh, of what we are doing today. All right. So, uh, Anneli, would you like to tell us a little bit about SAS and how you view digital transformation? Um, yes, I can do that. I mean, for us, it's, we are an airline, as all, all, all of you know. So within the operational side, it's no transformation. I mean, you have to have the procedures, the security and everything, no innovation. Yeah. But on the, commercial, on the commercial side, you really need to be innovative to stay competitive. And the customer's behavior is changing so rapidly. So for us, it's yes, we are uh, introducing some new technologies, robotics and all of that within the customer service, within the crew, and so on and so forth. But it's all about people. It's all about changing the way we work and how we interact internally to be able to have the pace and the agility to be able to launch new things. So it's, it's definitely a transformation. Yeah. Thank you, Anneli. And uh, now we heard a bit about the automotive industry, a bit about airlines. Uh, and we have one tech company on stage, and of course uh, the bar is a bit higher when we talk yeah. about the, the, the tech companies, and also global one. You're from Microsoft. How do you perceive and view and work with the digital transformation? Well, that's of course a huge, huge question, but I would say, I mean, we came to a point as a company where our traditional business model uh, within productivity were not that, I mean, it didn't, we have had done so many things during a lot of years and we had to change what we do so we i mean transforming our business model to to uh, cloud services uh, is of course challenging because we both have to transform as a company and we also have to lead our customers digital transformation at the same time uh, but when we talk about uh, digital transformation and digital priorities uh, at our customers uh, we talk about how to uh, how to engage your um, customers, how to uh, empower your employees, how to um, transform your business model and how to operate, uh, what's it called, uh, optimize your operations. Uh, so within these four areas, how do we, with our technology, help our customers? All right, thank you. Fredrik, you're the generalist up here today and I told him that he's Mr. Know-it-all today, so what these guys can to answer, I'll just hand over to you, Fredrik. Uh, that's, that's a good role to be in, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, <coughs> these days you cannot uh, even aspire to know so much that you are referring to, so I'm, I'm very humbled for all the things. Happy You'll be all right. You'll be all right. I'm yeah. just kidding with you. Uh, when we heard about SES, we heard about Scania, we heard about Microsoft and the way they look on uh, digital transformation. Is that pretty much what you see and hear in your everyday lives at uh, BCG? No, I think it is. I think on the one hand side you can say that there is nothing new under the sun because you've been working with transformation and change for, for decades uh, and, and, and good old things around cross-functional teaming or putting people from different departments together and solve a problem, working fast. Now we just have fancy words like agile and sprints, but, but on the one hand side there is nothing new. On the other side uh, the speed of technology innovation, the, the, the speed of new things happening uh, is just unprecedented. So you need to be much more prepared and, and work faster. So uh, I think these companies are, are fantastic examples of, of technology embracing, changing uh, companies. Yeah, thank you. And today's topic is digital transformation in global companies and global organizations. Uh, could you... Uh, Ulrika, tell us a little bit about 
what you see as specific challenges when you are not only like a Swedish or regional player, you are an, a global player? Yeah. Um... I mean, I see many things, and first of all, I think that our transformation is very much about changing our culture, mm -hmm. changing how we work, changing our mindset, uh, really from the basics. We have to be, instead of being the, the know-it-alls, we have to really be the learn-it-alls. Uh, we have to, to change how we learn about our customers, how we work with in inclusiveness and with, with diversity, how we work together as one team. I think that's maybe the biggest challenge for us because we have been very siloed uh, before and now we really have to do this together because otherwise we will never uh, succeed. Uh, but of course we have the cultural differences in different uh, companies uh, or in different... Uh, um, in different um Departments? Yeah, the departments, countries. but countries, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. really, Monday morning, yeah. <laughs> uh, within different, uh, uh, I would say, because, I mean, we talk a lot about, we have to be able to experiment, we have to be able to take risks, and we have to also allow our employees to, to fail, as yeah. long as we learn something about it, but that's easy to say here in Sweden, for us, yeah. okay, we, we can really experiment, we can have that kind of culture, but when we talk about our friends in, in Western Europe, for example, they might not have the same um, the same uh, understanding of when, when we are trying to do something very creative here in Sweden. Uh, so, so, and also leadership. Again, I mean, uh, we talk about having the, the learning mindset. That's maybe easy here in Sweden and maybe not in, in other countries. Yeah. You mentioned something which I really liked. It, <clears throat> I liked a lot, but there was... Uh, you said we go from a know-it-all culture to mm -hmm. a learn-it-all culture. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that journey, or what, was that something that was expressed internally that we had used to have yeah, a know-it-all? Really. Yeah, and I, and uh, at least our customers have expressed that for us. Yeah. No, but we. I mean, it, it's a fact that we, when we move from our traditional license-based uh, transactional business, when we always had. That the, we were in the know words, we really knew what our customers wanted and, and needed. And we had our conversations with our customers' IT, mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, to really help our customers transform their businesses, we really have to understand. We have to understand different industries, we have to understand our customers and what they really need. And that's a totally different way of working. Yeah. Um, so, so we have to have that open mindset. We, have, we, we talk a lot about growth mindset. Yeah. Uh, we really need to, to be curious and to learn all the time. And if you used to be one of these know-it-alls, mm. and now you should be like a learn-it-all, I mean, that's quite a, a change for, for a person, right? Yeah. I mean, know-it-all is more like, okay, I'm an expert, I'm going to tell you what's, what's happening here. Mm. Learn-it-all, maybe it's more about listening. Yeah. Has that also changed uh, within the company, the status of different people and so on and so forth? Or how, how did you deal with that? Well, I, I would say also in many different ways. We are, I mean, I, I work here in Sweden and we are mostly within sales and marketing. So, of course, I have the sales perspective. But how we really are transforming our sales people uh, yeah. into being the listeners, being the, the learners. And, of course, related to both trainings, but also a lot of coaching and uh, and we have, of course, the, the benefit, the very strong benefit, I would say, of having a CEO such as Anadella, who is so extremely transparent himself. He always talk about in a monthly, on a monthly basis. He has like kind of a Q and A where he share his learnings, where he talk about his mistakes. With everyone uh, in with Microsoft. everyone, with, um, he's bro broadcasting that for everyone. Yeah. So of course, having that kind of a top a clarity from the top is, of course, very very beneficial. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Anneli, what about you? Do you see any specific challenges in terms of being a global company, uh, even though you have a strong regional base? Mm. Yeah, I think we have the same perspective there. Of course, it's the, the culture thing of it. Um, and you, you, you don't see your colleagues every day. And I mean, it's a lot of difference to driving change from a Scandinavian perspective as a Scandinavian leader, or if you're a Japanese leader. But we, we also can take some benefit from, for example, the colleagues in the US or in the UK, because they are ahead of us. But, but it's, it's, a, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a difference, because if you're here in Sweden, you have one office, you can team up with the colleagues at the, at the timely basis. 
but globally you can't. But then, of course, you can once again have the transformation in a digital way, uh, yeah. but it's different, it's uh, really different. So we have to work through the leaders. So for us, we are doing this transformation with the management team, of course, but also through the leaderships. It has to be leader-driven. Yeah. But it's a difference, definitely. It's a difference, mm. yeah. And Mika, uh, what about your uh, experience uh, within uh, Skåne, how do you view the specific challenges for the automotive industry in terms of digital transformation? Uh, well, I think that uh, for us, I, it's a little, little bit important to relate to like short-term and long-term perspective. Uh, long-term, we will have massive impact due to electrification and autonomous and, and also further connectivity. And in that case, to use your like wave metaphor, it's a lot about you know the timing and which yeah. wave to to hit on. And yeah. I mean, basically, uh, what we will be seeing in the ecosystem of, of transport and logistics is, is so so big changes that I don't think that we can really imagine what will happen. Mm -hmm. And and the value uh, the value pools and the profit pools will change uh, very drastically. And I think that there's a lot of thinking right now in like long haulage and short haulage on how to find the appropriate position. What do we actually go after? Because the opportunity is tremendous, but it is also uh, a lot of, yeah, take cater for a lot of investments. Yeah. And short term, I would argue that, I mean, uh, how many in here uh, has industry experience, has been working with manufacturing? Yeah, some of you, great. So, we, yeah. have, we, <laughs> have, yeah. Yeah, we have close to 20,000 people working in production. And, uh, uh, one challenge in, in that is how do you actually uh, get the knowledge out there? What you could do with data, what you could do with algorithms. I mean, we have a really great starting point with data, 350,000 almost connected vehicles. That's touching one part, part of the business, but to really uh, get the knowledge on what is possible out there would create so much leverage. And no one, I mean, there's a lot of discussion on what GE are doing, etc., etc. but basically no one has really disrupted their manufacturing or their internal processes uh, uh, within the incumbent firms yet. So uh, really really driving awareness and understanding on, on uh, the possibilities and the potential, that's a really, really important thing. So we're really still in the early stages of this transformation, right? Yeah, I think yeah. that, I think that the, I would, I mean, I've been with Skoya now for one year almost, mm -hmm. and I would really, I really think that uh, the big changes are still to come. Yeah. All right. Fredrik, uh, when you hear this, uh, would you like to share with, with us the, what you see as common uh, specific challenges for companies in transformation on a global scale? Yeah, and, and let's spin it positively and, and, and pick a little bit on, on Microsoft. I think yeah. Adela coming on board uh, after Balmer, who was kind of sitting on top of a sleeping gigantic uh, Microsoft company. And, and, and Adela came on board, and I'd love to hear more about it, and, and actually addressed the culture of, of, of being humble, talking to people, creating a team environment at Microsoft. And start so Balmer wasn't humble. <laughs> no, I think if you have been to his sales conferences, I mean, he was up there screaming and yelling at people. And if you went to the Seattle head office, there was always a line of, you know, 20, 30 people waiting to get audience with, with, with him for decision making. So, no, I mean, that is not humble leadership. No, I, agree. <laughs> I was just asking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but I think uh, addressing also sales and marketing at the start of the digital yeah. transformation of, of creating new Microsoft, both on the SMB side of packaging all products and services for digital online sales and self-service uh, buy and, and, and loyalization journey. Fantastic. Uh, what we're hearing now from Enrique around next generation sales B2B. I mean, we as B2B customers are also Googling, we're checking social references. Uh, it's kind of outdated to, to, to do cold calling. Now you have inside sales teams checking our cookies in terms of tracking. We are prioritizing leads. The whole sales and marketing transformation with modern technology is just something these guys are very, very good at and have been working hard at for many years. I think my point is, uh, if you have strong leadership from the top, uh, whether it's uh, Microsoft or, or Scania or, or SES, uh, and the good people around, that is the best way to do productive transformation work. Thank you. Thank you. So if we flip this around a bit, now we talked about the challenges, if we flip it to the opportunities, we all 
I mean, you are four positive people, so you already talked a bit about opportunities. But let's let's go through the opportunities once again. And if I start with you, Rika, what opportunities are specific uh, for transformation for you as a global company? What do you see as opportunities? Yeah, that's also huge a big, question. A huge question, yeah. of course. But I mean, if we look, I mean, from a people perspective, uh, from an internal perspective, to be able because. Our new mission to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Yeah. That's quite strong, right? Uh, and we, we, we really feel that uh, now much more than we did in the past. Because now when we can help our customers transform for real, we can also, I mean, with different perspective, coming from my background within HR, I'm also a result of our transformation because now I work with our customers' HR. Uh, so I can really use my knowledge around our journey to them help our customers. And that's, I mean, you are so proud of, I think, uh, being an employee at Microsoft now changing the world and making it possible for everyone. And that's, I mean, a very big, big thing. But also, I mean, when we talk about how we change our culture in terms of instead of having that kind of internal competition climate that we had in the past with the rating system and everything. And now we really assess our employees based on collaboration, how much we collaborate with each other. Yeah. And that's also, I mean, from a culture perspective, a totally different company. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amelie, uh, the whole airline is just, of course, extremely competitive. And uh, what opportunities do you think arises in terms of transformation for SAS? Mm. I mean, I think we have the black belt in transformation. Uh, everybody <laughs> knows that. I think the airline industry is yeah. extreme, uh, so to speak. But the new thing is the digital transformation, because once again, I think this enables us. Uh, we, we need to do this. It's not a nice thing to have. We need to do this to stay competitive and to be able to make life easier for our Scandinavian frequent traveler, which is our vision. This is a must-have, uh, and it's the, the positive thing is, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of things to do, but it's changing the culture and the method how we work together, and it's empower people. So for us, it's also making SES the, the stronger employee brand. So it's, it's the customer perspective, but it's also very much internal, mm -hmm. because now when we really do things. We, we really work cross-functionally in a different way. It's not project groups, steering groups, reference groups. We have a lot of internal meetings that we all have, but we work differently. And we also change the way we have the governance. It's the teams that make decisions now, not the management always. Yeah. And that's empowered people. So for, for us, I think, for me, it's, it's a lot of doing this enables us to be a better company in a sense. And yeah. that's with focus for the customer, but it's really beneficial for the organization. Right. Mikael, would you like to add on the previous speakers? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, Please, there, there are opportunities in all areas, improving employee experience, uh, making better business decisions, uh, uh, etc. But if I would single out one, which I think the industry would really benefit from, is, is really you know, applying an, an outside-in thinking on customer experience. So being still fairly new to the industry, I think that uh, what we will see in the years to come is that focusing on, on the owners and, and the drivers, like in the five-year perspective, will, will be increasingly important. And I think that there's so much value in doing that. Uh, so that would, be my, that would be my best bet, actually. But then, of course, I mean, there's so much to do in automation and robotics, you know, on the inside. I mean, improving the things that you are working with, there's, uh, there's really many good things to do. <laughs> How do you uh, at Scania work on choosing and picking and choosing these waves of changes that uh, comes along all the time? Uh, do you have like a specific innovation process for it or is it up to each and every division to, to pick or how does it work? That's the, that's the million dollar question. Yeah. <laughs> so looking, looking long term, uh, looking at the things that will actually disrupt, I think those, those decisions are done centrally and we do Many things there. We 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 are uh, of course we're in, into to venture capital uh, venture capital you know uh, startuping. Yeah. Acquiring a uh, part of the company in, in Berlin uh, about half a year ago called Sander, a digital freight forwarder. We are do, we are also doing excuse me a digital di digital freight forwarder. Okay, freight forwarder. You could look it up later. Yeah, I will do. It. I'm already doing it. <laughs> Everyone here knows what a freight forwarder is. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, so 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 those type of decisions are are, uh, are are done centrally. But then we really we are really into to fostering, you know, on on the shorter term object, objectives of, of picking up emerging uh, technologies like earlier on on the hype cycle uh, in in each part of the company. So everybody should be allowed to try and test, and then it's kind of the responsibility of my department to understand when we should go from emerging to, to common uh, enablers, basically. So uh, we're pushing that a lot, and and uh, and then, of course, there's a lot of stuff between that disruptive scope and the here and now scope. And there, we I think we can we see it all. Uh, we see you know internal business incubi incubation. We see you know uh, a lot of pilots. Uh, what what I we, we still see less of that in our industry compared to like financing and banking, which, which have been doing that uh, for a longer term. So, but I think that that will ramp up. So I think that we will do a lot more innovation on both short term and longer term. Yeah. Did that make sense? Yeah, it did make sense. Yeah. Did it make sense? Yeah. It did. Perfect. Fredrik, any specific opportunities you would like to put forward? I think it's consistent if you look at if we look at the, the full value creation potential from digital uh, across uh, the value chain of a company uh, over and over again sales and marketing comes out as the largest uh, improvement opportunity both in terms of uh, revenue growth and also uh, effectiveness including pricing etc so so regardless if you are a b2b company or b2c company uh, working on on stuff like demand generation to perfection lead generation, only sales driven approaches, data driven sales with algorithms and, and, and taking a life cycle view uh, for all of your customers. That's where you should be kind of uh, sleeping poorly, benchmarking to others in, in your industry, looking for inspiration uh, in, in other industries. And what's really amazing 2018 is that some of these traditional B2B industries are still not fully yet disrupted yet. There's few benchmarks in terms of how you deploy modern sales and marketing, uh, where I would be extra kind of cautious in terms of finding more upside and potential. So sales and marketing is a great topic. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned when we talked about this day before uh, Starbucks, and you mentioned a bit about their growth. Could you elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, no, I, I think many of us are exposed to incubation or experiments or one apartment doing a pilot uh, what i find amazing around starbucks is that it's probably 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 the first the global mnc company that has done a full rollout of segment of one marketing so a few years back they were very happy about having a, a loyalty uh, a campaign where they were sending emails probably a couple of thousand variants of emails to 20 or so million coffee-loving U.S. citizens. And, and they thought, this is not good enough. We want to be much more in the smartphone of, of our customers. So they a, had an app developed so they could do the purchase uh, with geo-tracking of their customers. Two, they looked into analyzing the different segments. Uh, three, they built algorithms that they started to pilot and test. So, so today in, in the U.S., you can you're being hit on a segment of one philosophy based on where you are, uh, what your historical patterns are, the weather of the day or the minute, and, and you're hit depending on who you are by, by the promotions. And, and, and the algo-driven promotions, I think, uh, represents two-thirds or more of the organic uh, sales growth uh, last year. So, so doing this at scale and getting it right, uh, Starbucks is a great example. So two-thirds of the growth comes from algorithms? Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, could you share, I'm pretty sure everyone here is like thinking, hmm, these guys have done a lot of good things uh, and maybe not so good things. But let's start with the good things. Could you <coughs> share something that you think that you as company has done really, really well that might even have exceeded your expectations going into that thing that you chose. Who would like to start here? Something you'd like to share that has gone really well internally? Or start? I can start. Yeah. Uh, I can start with something that I cannot take credit for at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. Yeah. 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 Uh, around 2011, we took some you know, major decisions on data. 
and, uh, and basically we, what we had been doing was when the, the car or the truck comes into the shop, we've been you know, downloading a gazillion data points through, through cable. And, and basically from that on having you know, uh, data-driven product development. What happened in, in 2011 was decisions were taken to do that wirelessly. And that led, that led to like, an amazing discovery on, on what we could do on the services side based on the data of the vehicles. And, and those type of decisions does not come with you know, like the, the best and perfect you know, uh, business case. And, and it was the vision of, of Henrik, who was actually now the CEO, to, to drive that. And, and based on that, we, we, have, we now have the possibility to do so much more things and also you know, extending uh, the understanding to other areas uh, on, on what algorithms and, and data could actually do. And, and that, I think, to me, that comes down to, to daring to try, uh, but also daring to try <laughs> like on a higher level. It's easy to do the pilots and do the experimentation like uh, on smaller scale, but then of course you have the problem of, of, of scaling that out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that, 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 is, that basically caters for uh, the baseline uh, to the digital acceleration approach that we are driving today. Did you have like a full scale business case? At that time, 2011 or so? Well, I wasn't at Scania then, but uh, I do not think so. Uh -huh. <laughs> You, you just felt it, it was a lot about advice, no, that strong was right. vision, yeah. I would say. All right. Anyone else would like to share something that has been done extremely well or well? Well, I can start from a yeah. people perspective again, because yeah. again, that's really for me what it's all about. Uh, technology is never the problem. Uh, I would say one part of why we are really seeing uh, our, I mean, really. Uh, getting to the success that we want, but still we are on the journey, we are not done there at all. Uh, but I would say one thing is balancing the fact that we both have to perform in our traditional business and at the same time transform, because in the perform business we have the short-term revenue and everything coming in right now, but then we also have to perform at the, uh, transform at the same time. So I would say, and that's a lot about leadership, a lot about showing clarity in terms of how to prioritize, uh, that's uh, one part of the, the, um, the positive part, I would say, being able to really to really balance that, uh, because it's a great challenge, I would say, to really um, to know what to do when you both have to perform and transform at the same time. Yeah. Anneli, yeah. Okay, something. Uh, yeah, I can pick one thing actually, and that's uh, the launch of the crew pad, the iPads on board. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the technology part of it. Yes, it is. But what it does, it enables us to have the data uh, for the customer, the, the customer data, um, all throughout the value chain, but it's on board. So for our, uh, for our customers today, they usually don't meet a person, an SAS person. They you know, book online, they check in online, and then the first time they meet an SAS colleague is on board. So this enables our colleagues to have the right information to address to the customer. If you're, you're a bonus member, uh, and also in the in the future, not for today, but we the technology enables us also to see if you're a corporate customer, or maybe a last trip that we were delayed, or lost your luggage, or whatever it is, so we can treat you on board. Mm -hmm. So that's actually technology enabling uh, a better customer uh, um, customer experience, but also for the once again the crew to have their empowerment, because usually you have this, you know papers on board. Maybe you see that when you fly, they have the passenger list on paper. I mean, this is 2018. Yeah. So we actually the first airline in the world just adding out the, the pads on board. So that's driven by technology, but it's also the how, how you can use it to, to benefit the, in the customer experience. Cool. Cool. All right, now we're going to go uh, fast forward, forward to, and if there are any sensitive listeners, you have to kind of shut your ears here, but it's easy that we talk only about the successes, but uh, maybe also we'd like to talk a bit about the failures and the fuck-ups uh, when you didn't do as well as you expected. I mean, there are even conferences for fuck-ups nowadays, so uh, I, think, I think it's okay also to bring it on stage here. So, I'll start with you, Fredrik, and I, I told you before that I'm going to push you a bit uh, about this question as well, regarding BCG, not your companies, but regarding Boston Consulting Group as a company. Are there any 
any stories you could share with us where you as a company did do that well in terms of transforming also BCG because you are also in a huge transformation right yeah we are no if, if I spoke I speak about BCG uh, I, I think what we can do much more is on our internal change management journey we, we have done let me back up four years and, and our global CEO, Rich Lesser, he, he tasked 10 partners in a partnership of 12, 1,200 partners to, to do a strategy for 2020 for BCG. And, and one part went extremely well around being recognized for more than PowerPoint. Mikkel was on me this morning. And, <laughs> uh, people still have a perception of BCG being this matrix with four boxes and all we do is PowerPoint. We were talking about the most important collaboration too. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing wrong with PowerPoint. Nothing wrong with PowerPoint. So that part we at least addressed well in terms of building up new capabilities for, for serving our clients well uh, with BCG Gamma, which is our data scientist team today, 700 people. We have 60 here in the office in Stockholm. We have BCG DB, which is enabling, for example, collaboration with the Microsoft globally to do uh, coding, UX design. Yada, yada, yada. And then we have BCG Platinum, which is our new IT architecture uh, arm, um, which can provide independent uh, IT advice. So that all of that is kind of feeding our growth at the moment globally and in Stockholm, which has been double digit globally for the last 30 years plus, and another year of 30% 30, 30 growth here in Sweden. But when you have such an aggressive sales and marketing, market driven transformation, I think we should be much better at uh, enabling internal tools such as uh, uh, deploying Workday or the new Microsoft solution for HR. We can work with Salesforce, uh, you know, tools. Uh, the whole IT agenda, the finance agenda is kind of every quarter it's the right decision to make it second priority. But if you take a longer term, -term perspective, I, I think uh, those functions, those IT investments, decisions are, are actually quite important and, and should every quarter now and then come on top and be priority. So I think getting better balance there, I, I wouldn't use the, the F word, but uh, I would use the word uh, we could have done and can do that significantly better. Yeah. That was a much nicer way to put it, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any, any anyone else that would share, like to share uh, some kind of F word? Uh, up uh, yeah, thing? I wouldn't call uh, the acquisition of Nokia an F word actually, yeah. but it was. I mean, the fact that we were too late. I mean, we made many brave uh, decisions uh, and still do, but but we totally missed the mobile business. Yeah. Uh, why in, why is that? I think it was too late, and we were not. I don't know because it was two great brands, but together we did. We just we were too late. We had all the competition that had done so many th uh, good things uh, before us. Uh, of course, resulting in uh, at least 18,000 employees redundant after the Nokia uh, acquisition. Yeah. But that was, I mean, a very very <coughs> good idea. Uh, but we were too late. Yeah. I saw, by the way, that Nokia as a brand was out again with a new phone, but someone bought the brand, I think. So I saw a new Nokia phone. Mm -hmm. Few weeks ago, so. Okay, uh, Mika. Yeah. Uh, Any failures you'd like to share? I think that personal or for Scania. <laughs> well, I fail a lot. <laughs> no, but basically, I think that all all, uh, all companies and all enterprises, you know, fail all the time. Yeah. Uh, what 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 kind of uh, bugs me is when you fail the wrong way. Yeah. So I mean. It is 2018 now, and uh, there are, you know, methodologies, you know, doing like, for instance, outside-in approaches to, to customer experience. But, but still, we don't do that, uh, you know, in some cases. And then, and then you end up with a service which you, you know, put a lot of money into, and you discuss now, oh, yeah, we haven't implemented enough. But, but basically, in, in some cases, it might come down to that. Yeah, we, we, we developed something that there wasn't a need of, or, or with a total misconception of what the needs were. So I think I, I still think that uh, yeah, failing yeah, let's do that a lot, but let's fail the right way. Let's let's try to to get the understanding uh, really really early on what the needs are or what the best bet of what the needs are. Uh, and I think that uh, the industry can do uh, a lot more of that. I think. Yeah. yeah. So fail the right way is a good way of putting it. Yeah. Andy, would you like to add something as well? <coughs> yeah. Uh, 
yeah, we fail a lot, of course, as well. Everybody does. I, I would like to add a personal perspective on that one because I'm now driving this digital transformation and maybe not failure, but one thing that I <coughs> constantly have to think about because in my mind, I'm 2023 and everything has to go rapidly and you know the change is here and I'm all into this one. I'm passionate about it. But sometimes I forgot, I forget that the, the people within my team are not there yet. So that's the, I think, the, the leadership issue. You really have to be aware that everybody, you have to, yeah, you know, the train, uh, I'm in the beginning of the train, but I have to secure that everybody of my colleagues is on the train anyway. Yeah. So that's maybe not a fuck up, but anyway, it's a learning, so. It's a learning that we all need to learn, that it's so easy that we think that everyone knows what we know, and yeah. we are maybe cutting edge, uh, yeah. and the rest might not be, so we have to think about that. Johan, yeah. do you feel like uh, interrupting and having an exercise? Yeah, why not? Yeah, would that be a good day? Good thing uh, to do. Yeah. I could fail. Yeah, you could fail. <laughs> I'm counting on you failing, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I'm going to ch challenge you in, in failing. Uh, I'm going to give you like 30 seconds just to move around. We have a lot of experience here. And this is really difficult. But we'll give it 30 seconds. Just move around so you don't sit uh, besides uh, people you know. Okay? I'm going to count down. 30. That's me. Hey, Humla. Hi. Okay, film second Hi, Tobias, nice okay, to Okay, you're done. Did uh, anyone leave any traces? <laughs> That's okay, you can always come back and pick up your stuff. Okay, um, so what, what have, you, have we learned today? We, we, we learned that collaboration is uh, something we need to do. So now we're going to collaborate, and we're going to give you like five minutes, you're going to work three and three, and you're going to get, um, um, you're going to discuss what, what have we, we learned, and also what do we want to learn more about, and we have people here to ask. So discuss in five minutes, what have you learned, and what do we, what do we want to learn more about. And then at the end of the session, five minutes, you're going to pick up your phones again, and you're going to... Actually, only two minutes in there. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to discuss for five minutes. Yeah, and then two minutes. Yes, and then yeah. we have two yeah. minutes. Yeah. Pick up your phones for two Sorry. minutes. You're going to get a, a new Menti uh, question here. And, uh, or not a question, you just add what, your thoughts, and we'll, find, we'll get them here on the screens, and then we'll discuss. Okay? You get it? Yeah. Okay. Five minutes. Go. <laughs> Are you ready for the next step? I can tell some of you actually cheated. I can tell you're sitting next to people you know, but that's okay. Um, don't miss the business opportunities now, because you know a few more new people here. So let's add your thoughts to the Manti, okay? And give that about one and a half, two minutes. Just write your questions. Write your questions to the and panel. your thoughts. Yeah. Just, and you can add as many as you want. Just saying some of us don't get the internet. Oh, you don't have the internet, okay. 
Uh, it's uh, epicenter is the Wi-Fi, and uh, the password is Urban Escape in one word with a capital U and uh, capital E. So epicenter Urban Escape, large uh, U and large E. It's about people. Yeah. How can we make better decisions? Any questions to the panel you can add here as well? Specific? It doesn't work. Yeah, that's the Can you move the okay. The cursor. I think um, you're so many, we could have an explosion of <laughs> thoughts if we just wait. So let's wait uh, 30 more seconds. From know it all to learn it all. I think that's one of the key uh, sentences that we keep in mind when we leave here, right? From know it all to learn it all. You I think you have a good start here. Yeah. Do you want to continue? Yeah, I can continue. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, we still have some questions popping in. Keep adding. Uh, we have a question here. Uh, da, da, da. How do one get all leadership to help drive digital transformation? Who would like to answer that? How do one get all leadership or to help drive digital transformation? All or old? <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's usually the same, actually. Yeah, could be. <laughs> I would like to answer both. <laughs> yeah, I can answer both. No, but uh, I can take it. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's about, yeah, it's all about leadership, as I said, and how to manage to get all leaders. Yeah. That's totally uh, the basics to have the involvement. You have to have, you know, this is the way we're going. A vision, but they, within the di digital arena, that's quite uh, different because you don't really know what's going to happen 2023. But you have to be able to, anyway, point out uh, a goal out there, and then involvement. I totally believe in that because leaders are people as well, and if they feel that they want to be part of this transformation by heart, then they will follow and make it happen. So that's total basic leadership, but it's the, the difference is that this is quite hard because you know we want the plan, we want the powerpoints, we want the you know the, the business plan because we're used to that. But to lead in this sense is is uh, different. It might take some you know um, guts to do that because you have to be brave and say I don't know actually how to do it, but let's do it together. Yeah. I also think it's very important. We tend to forget this, that leaders are people as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, we do tend to forget it. So please keep in mind that even leaders are people. You okay? How do we perform and transform at the same time? I think Frederick had one. Uh... Well, just on the previous yeah? uh, comment, okay. I, I, I learned from a good friend and client uh, one important aspect of, of, of getting all leadership on board. And, and he. It's a Swedish phrase, but I'll use it anyways. He said it's so key to bully bumpy fiera, what we are trying to do here. And, and for those of you not knowing bully bumpa, it's a great kids show. And, and with all this new technology, it is hard to feel safe, secure, understand what's happening. So if, if senior leadership cannot acknowledge the fact that we need to speak about all these things in a simple way for the full organization to understand, and if we don't dare to do that as leaders, uh, it's hard to drive an, an all-leadership committed transformation process. And, and there are so many new things happening with AI, uh, uh, data scientist opportunities. I mean, technology is hard to, to understand and talk about. So bully bumpy fiera, I think, is part of the recipe. Is that why you're on passion dance with a cow a few years ago? No? You, have you, have you have to ask him. Okay, ask him. Uh, all right, any other questions? We had uh, how do you perform and transform at the same time? Who would like to take a lead on that one? Well, I could just give, I mean, yeah. again, that's also a huge question, but I would say 
it's all about people <laughs> again yeah. because this is really about building relationship and building relevancy uh, with our customers um, because we still when we still have to have that IT dialogue selling the the, the traditional business the, the the licensed business and then also transforming at the same time we, we have to to balance that but we also really have to work on on building relationship with our customers uh, business leaders uh, it's easy to say, uh, but it's really not that easy to do. Um, and then to 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 uh, we have worked. I mean, from an HR perspective, we've worked a lot with our managers to also be clear on what is performed today and what what is transformed uh, for tomorrow, and how do we assess that. Uh, so there are a lot of different aspects. Uh, how what what do what should we um, to, I mean, how, how should we assess and what should we then also reward in the in the end? Because we still we, we need both. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but to have like in a team, we, we need to have both the, the transformers and the performers. Great. I'm looking at the watch, and uh, we need to start uh, not wrapping up, but uh, we're soon there. <laughs> so, each of you now, I would like you to give your absolute best advice in short. To the audience. Uh, there are a lot of people here that are in the midst of transformation or about to transform. What is your key message, your one advice to them? Anneli. Short and crisp, I think. Uh, have the vision, engage, <clears throat> dare, and then start. Because if you don't start, you're never going to go there. So that's the four short ones. Great. Don't forget to start. That's mm. a good one. Jump into the water. Yeah. Mika? Uh, I would say make it make it a lot about inspiration and lust. Uh, I mean, you, you tend to forget that in those really big, you know, or small transformation efforts. It's not, you know, that many, you know, happy faces that you see on, on the follow-up meetings, etc. And I think that we forget that we work with, you know, really interesting things, and we should be, you know, kind of happy about it. Yeah. Uh, we need to bring that back a lot, I think. Yeah. The lust and inspiration and be happy that we have the positions that we're having and that we can experience these amazing times that we go through. Yeah, I really agree on both of, 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 of you and also to communicate <coughs> from the top. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have to, to share both uh, our failures, what we've learned from that, but also the, the, where we are really, where we see signs of transformation. Uh, of course, to, to, uh, as a CEO uh, at a glo global company, you really need the technology, of course, to be able to really reach all your employees, but that's an extremely important part, to, to have that kind of transparent leadership. Yeah. Felix? Yeah, so if we look at the global largest companies in terms of market capitalization uh, and, and valuations today and going back a few years, it's interesting to note that we have so many large tech companies now being part of the top 10 or top 20 and what we are pushing in our communication with clients all the time is that the, the one advice is around in-house capability building because if you're going after whether say it's a marketing, manufacturing, R&D, um, support functions at the head office, if you don't have in-house capabilities uh, like the larger tech companies transforming, you are reliant on, on uh, outsourcing what is most important for your future. So um, really building in-house capabilities in these new areas, um, that is the difference between companies you know, transforming slower versus much faster, more successful people. You mentioned before that you think the companies should invest around 10 to 15 percent of their market cap in transformation. Yeah, so if you look at some of the major transformations happening right now around the world, the ones that are really all in and saying, you know, we don't have two or three years to figure out if we are having a successful in incubation or experiment, that we are seeing uh, two, two to three year programs to do an end-to-end -end transformation of, of large global companies. And the way they are funding it is to, to also separate out the agenda in a simple way. So A, you have a couple of funding initiatives in terms of technology digital, winning in the medium term, more, more, more longer term, and then tremendous focus on capability building and hiring. Uh, because if you don't do these three things in parallel, yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, great panel, isn't it?
We would like to keep them here for hours. Is it okay if you hang around two or three hours more? Uh, I have a lot of questions for you. Uh, so give them a big round of applause, everyone. This might not come as a surprise for you, but you will get a present, and it's a, quite a good book, I would say. And we, signed? Uh, it's yeah. not yet signed, but we can arrange that for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, uh, we are three minutes uh, over time. Uh, we'll keep you here for a few, <coughs> few minutes as well. I'm just going to enter here and see if I can tell you about what's happening next. Uh, at 10, we have a new session, and it starts at uh, level 7, so that's the Ekvärd Klustret, and it's uh, Caroline Stjernstedt-Salborn that will talk about five essential skills for thriving in a complex and rapidly changing world. Uh, and please check out the program also. It's, I think it's on screens or on different boards out there that you could check out as well. If there is anyone here interested in digital transformation more and talk to Dick Journey, you could talk to Lars, who's outside there. There are also books uh, to buy, a, a very special price for you today, of course. And uh, yeah, keep transforming and love, peace and transformation, everyone. <laughs> Yeah,